Hello, I'm Vincent Everett. I'm here to talk to you about developing extended spontaneous answers and the idea that it's not just teaching them more language, it's actually how we teach pupils to use the language and the routines and the triggers that we have and the ways to make it more coherent and um, develop their answers spontaneously. So, if you ask, if you ask a pupil to write some French, uh, they might write your sentence and they feel quite pleased with themselves and then um, have a little think and then they write another sentence and then um, oh, is there anything else I can say um, I know oh I'll just yeah I could write this uh, and then that so you you okay there's nothing wrong with it um, it's in French there's no mistakes I don't think um, but it's not linked it's running out um, they stopped at the end of each sentence to think what was next. There was no vision, there was no idea where it was going, there's no coherence. What you really want is pupils to be able to write, you know, spontaneously or even speak. Um, this person says he likes to go shopping with his friends, a uh, favourite restaurant called Ed's Diner, um, shopping with parents, shopping with friends, um, wanted to go with their friends but hadn't got enough money so went with their parents, had to go shopping with their parents turned up at Ed's diner and it's permanently shut which is a true story um, so yeah that's what we want this book is what um, our friend Zach remember him so desperately needs it's called if you give a mouse a cookie it's by Laura Numeroff illustrated by Felicia Bond I think it's Australian uh, wonderful whimsical tale of a mouse if you give a mouse a cookie he's going to want a glass of milk if you give a, a mouse a glass of milk, he's going to want to look in the mirror to see if he's got a milk moustache. If you let a mouse look in the mirror, he's going to want to give his hair a trim. And it goes on and on, and you turn the pages, and it comes round at the end. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for you, but it comes round back to the beginning. So we need the same thing with um, when we start writing. I like to live in Norfolk because... so. Here you go. If you start with an opinion, I like to go to the park, you're probably going to justify it. There is not a pupil in any of my classes that would not have the next word, parce que. Parce que je peux jouer au tennis avec mes, avec mes amis. Once you've justified your opinion, I like to go to the park because I can play tennis with my friends, you're probably going to explore the circumstances. Surtout si fait beau, an if sentence. Mr. Everett likes if sentence. If you do one if sentence, if I go with my friends, but if I go with my family, if I go to Spain, but if I have to stay in England, if I go to the swimming pool, if I go to the beach. Um, if you do one if sentence, you're probably going to do the opposite if. Oops, I went funny there. I like to go to the park with my friends, especially if it's sunny, but if it rains, I have to stay at home. Ah. We missed one here. If you mention someone else, because I can play tennis with my friends, that's when you're going to use those conjugated verbs. So we teach ER verbs, but do we teach pupils when to use them, when to deploy them, what the trigger is? Make it a rule. If you say, with my brother, he. If you say, with my family, we. With my parents, they. Um, I like to play, um, play tennis with my friends. Nous jouons ensemble tous les samedis. We play together every Saturday. So there you go. Okay, if you've been giving your opinion, you should probably give someone else's opinion. On the other hand, my sister prefers to go into town. Now what we've done now is we've set up a difference of opinion and this is going to be exploited. You'll probably give an example. For example, last weekend I was going to do my homework. Next word, but this is what I mean, little triggers that make things roll. So if you said what you were going to do, you'll probably say why you changed your mind. But it was nice weather. S next word, so. So my sister said, I'm going into town. Make it a rule. If you use direct speech, the same as we had if you say if one thing, you do if the other. If someone says something, you'll probably give a reply. I said, I'm going, I've got to do my homework. She said, you can do your homework tomorrow. Next word, so. 
If you used I was going to, make it a rule, use I decided to. So, I decided to go into town with my sister. Now this, I was going to, also gives them the, it's a nice cheat for the past tense. I was going to do this, but I decided to do that. And you can use it with any verb. I was going to go swimming. I decided to go to the beach. I was going to do my homework, but I decided to go out with my friends. But it also contains the form there you've got, I was going to, j'allais, but you could later come on to teach, je jouais, I was teaching, je mangeais, I was eating, je parlais, I was talking in my geography lesson, and I decided to, obviously you can use it with any verb, I decided to go, I decided to stay at home, I decided to call my friend, but also it contains the je and then the e acute, the past tense is already encoded in there when they move on to learn, so it's a cheat for now, but it is going to lead on to tenses. Anyway, so I decided to go into town with my sister. If you decided to go along with someone else's wishes, you're probably going to have a disagreement because you're going to, well, here we go. I wanted to buy some shoes, but unfortunately my sister just wanted to see her friends. If you've had a disagreement, by the way, if you don't like I wanted, she wanted, stick to speech. J'ai dit, I want to get some shoes. Elle a dit, no, I want to see my friends. And putting speech in brings it to life even more. But anyway. I wanted to buy some shoes, but unfortunately my sister wanted to see her friends. If you have a disagreement, you're probably going to have a disappointment. I would have liked to go shopping. Now, throwing in fancy expressions like me hubiera gustado in Spanish, or, I would have liked to, I would have wanted to in French, for the for the just for the sake of it, to show off to an examiner, well, maybe not, but this is the culmination of this story that's gone through, um, difference of opinion, an example in the past, a disagreement, disappointment, so it, it, it works, it's not thrown in for the sake of it. I would have wanted to go shopping. If you've had a little disappointment, maybe there's hope for next time. Tomorrow, I'd like to go back to go, to go into town, or maybe not, I've got to do my homework which is absolutely linked to what we said in the first place. If you go back in the story, I've got to do my homework. No, 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 let's go to the, into town today. So it's coherent, but it's all completely rolled from the beginning. We've got an opinion with a reason. You've mentioned someone else, you do a conjugated verb, you do an if sentence, you do the opposite if sentence, you bring in someone else's opinion, hop into the past to give an example. Um, I was going to do my homework. But then you change your mind, maybe some speech, um, what you decided to do, a difference of opinion, a disappointment, maybe the future. You could, you could see here, you could change this very, very easily, very quickly to a different topic completely. Um, here's one in Spanish. This person loves going to, Sp to Norwich on the bus. They can eat with McDonald's. If they go with the family, then she doesn't like, her mum doesn't like fast food. If they go with their friends, they can do this. Uh, some speech, um, what they were going to do, what they decided to do, they ate too much, they would have preferred to have a healthy sandwich. This is not about the language. We all teach, I like, I can, I have, I want, she prefers, it is sunny. We can teach, I was going to, it was sunny, I said, she said, I decided. If you don't like, I wanted, stick with the speech, I said, I want, she's wanted, she said, I want close brackets. Sorry, there's a mistake there. Um, we went, we all teach it, we decided we can teach. It's not about the language. It's about pupils using their language. Um, I would have liked to, I'm going to. Getting good at using your language. Here's one way I do this. So these useful bits of language that are the basis for any of these narratives we're going to develop here you can see my classroom on the table right in front of us. Actually, that's person number two um, here in the foreground. So person number one to their right would have I like, I love, I prefer, I don't like to choose from. This person's got because I can, because I can't, because I have to. The person behind has got especially if. The person next to them has got but if. It's basically this. Um, all around the class. In fact, on one half of the class, I've got all the opinions going all the way through to my sister likes or my brother prefers. And then on the other side of the classroom, I've got the past, starting from we went, I wanted, he wanted, this was happening, this happened. And then pop this on the board. 
So um, go around the class. Pers the first person got it on their desk. I like to go to the aquarium. Person two, pick it up because I can see the fish. Make person two do the whole story. I like to go to the aquarium because I can see the fish. Per next person's got an if, if, especially if it rains. Next person's got a but if it's sunny, I prefer to go to the beach. Make this person do the whole story. I like to go to the aquarium because I can see the fish, especially if it's a rainy day, because if it's sunny, I go to the aquarium. Next person, my brother doesn't like to see, doesn't like to see the fish. He prefers to go and touch the starfish in the touch tank place. Okay, over to the other side of the classroom. We went to the aquarium. I wanted to see the fish. My brother said, no, 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 I want to touch a starfish. What was happening? My brother was touching the starfish. I was taking photos. What happened? I dropped my camera in the water. Um, I cried. Okay, and then you can make them do the whole story, you make them do it speaking, writing around the class. Then you can do this theme park story. I like to go to the theme park because I go on the rides. My brother doesn't like to go on the rides, he just likes to eat loads of sweets and drink fizzy pop. And then you can see what happened at the end. Um, you, even if they're sitting in the, exa in the exam room, they can think in their head round the class. Uh, opinion, reason, if sentence, opposite if sentence, difference of opinion, um, where we went, what they said, what I said, what we decided to do, what was happening, what happened. So these, these stories, like that, can transfer across to any topic. And it, just thinking your way around the class, you've got it. Another one is to do it as, there you are, there's the aquarium story, just, you know, right up at the end of the lesson. Everyone's is slightly different. Um, a game plan. So here we have um, attack, uh, your defensive half on the left, attacking half on the right. You've got the connectives down the bottom and because especially um, so that you can join it up with. And also, por ejemplo, you can see for example in yellow in the middle, that's your key to hop into. For example, when I went to Spain, it pushes you into the past tense. Um, so this is the defensive half, play out from the back, be confident on the ball, take no risks, keep moving the ball and move into space. Um, and you can do this all day. I like to go swimming, especially if I can go to the beach. But I also like to go to the swimming pool, but I don't like it if I have to go with my family. I would prefer, I prefer to go to the beach with my friends, but I have to, oh, you keep going, keep going. And then, por ejemplo, for example, at the weekend, it was sunny. I was going to do my homework. My friend said, um, okay, so you make it into a, into a game plan. In this defensive half, you can have um, a one, two with an if, if it's sunny, but if it's raining, always go for the one, two. In this attacking half, always go for the one, two with I said, she said. Um, and then quite how far you go with this. So this is where you show off your tricks, show off, score goals. Um, yeah, so that's a couple of ways of, of putting this into practice. So uh, we've come a long way since Zach. Lovely. Right. Thank you very much.